I'm at the old Orient Silver Mines today, a little bit west of Herberton in North Queensland. And there are literally hundreds of pits and shafts like this one scattered all over the hillsides here. And as I've mentioned previously in a couple of other videos, which I'll link up here somewhere, I just love old workings because they give you a unique insight into which structures were really well mineralized. But in order to make use of that information, you have to know which structures connected to which workings. And that can be a little bit difficult when the old miners have stripped out every single piece of vein that was in that working, just like this one here. But there is a way around that. You often find old workings like this where the main mineralization type was a vein and the old fellas have stoped out every skerrick of it here and you've got to admire the fortitude of those blokes because there's just a few sticks holding that roof up now. But it is a golden opportunity to get an orientation for the vein because even though all the vein material is gone, the shape and hence the orientation you can measure that off the walls of the stope. Now here's another working in a similar style. They've got a bit of a rectangular portal at the top and then it widens out into a big slot stope further down. So we know that they were chasing a vein and the shape of that stope represents the orientation of the vein. But the stope's been here over a hundred years. There's quite a decent tree growing out of the portal there and most of the sticks that they use to hold up the roof have now rotted away. So there's absolutely no way I'm going in there to put a Brunton on the roof of that stope. But I don't have to because I can use my sighting clinometer to sight down the angle of the roof to get me the dip and then with a sighting compass I can just sight down the steepest dip line to get me the dip direction and that's all I need. So that tells me the exact orientation of the vein and that'll help me to understand how that relates to all the other workings around here and in fact how the whole system operates. Now I've made a couple of other videos about the value of looking around old mullock dumps to see what kind of information you can get about the mineralogy of the ore, the relationships between the different phases of ore, the alteration, the host rock, and a whole bunch of other useful information like that. So in this case, I've found a nice piece of primary ore here, and that'll tell me two things. One, it'll give me the main mineralogy of the ore they were mining, and secondly, it tells me that they got at least deep enough to get to the primary ore. You can see it's almost massive sulphide. It doesn't have any quartz at all in this case and most of it's a kind of a bronze colored sulfide and there's a little bit of dark blackish sulfide here that has really good cleavage so that's phalerite and the more bronzy colored sulfide there's a few candidates for that but in this case it's really magnetic that really grabs my pencil magnet there you can see so there's no question that that's pyrotite. Now that's really useful information because now I know not only what they were mining here, but also I know the geochemical signature that this style of mineralization will have in soil surveys, stream sediment surveys, and regional rock chips. And in this case, because that pyrotite's really magnetic, and as it happens, all the surrounding rocks here are rhyolite, I know that this will also have a quite strong mag signature, so we can use that as a targeting tool. So when you find an old mine working like this one, where they seem to have taken every skerrick of ore from the vein, don't just throw up your hands and log it as a hole. Measure the orientation of the stope, and then scout around on the dumps and see if you can find out what they were mining. 